Good morning everyone. It's still January but uh, we're lucky to actually have a warmer day here and today I'm going to do something that wasn't really planned. Namely I'm going to change the oil in uh, the manual transmission of the little Opal. I say it wasn't really planned because uh, one of the first videos that I did was the one where I swapped the manual gearbox on this very same car for one with longer ratios and that happened one year ago at which point I did put fresh oil in it however after driving for 15,000 kilometers which is nearly 10,000 miles give or take I'm under the impression that uh, the box shifts a bit hard in first and second especially when very cold after it gets warm it shifts absolutely fine but those hard shifts in the first and second gears got me thinking that uh, it may just as well be an oil issue. So I started researching a bit and the more I researched, the more I'm thinking it is an issue with the oil itself. And because of that, and because I am expecting colder temperatures to arrive here, not too far in the future, I figured it's a great opportunity to throw the old oil away and put some new one in. And before we start, it's time for more boring theory. If you happen to watch the gearbox swapping video, you'll notice that the oil I used was uh, Febby 32590, if uh, memory serves me correctly. And I explained back then that the reason why I used this oil is because it's among the few oils that I could find that exactly matched the standard required by GM for the F17 gearbox, namely standard 1940768. And that oil was a 75W90 GL5 and for one year it behaved 95% well. But after researching the last couple of days, I understood uh, a few things. Namely that the 1940768 standard has actually been discontinued by GM. And it was replaced by a new one, which is 1940182. Now the oil for this new standard, 1940182, is red in color, not yellow. And it's supposed to be a 75W85 GL4. But the problem is apparently everyone thinks, including dealers, that this particular spec of oil is of rather poor quality. And apparently GM th thought as well, because later on in 2012-2013, they actually came with a new standard for these boxes, which is 194004. And you'll find that the oil that meets this standard is either 75W, like the one we have here from Ravenol, or occasionally 75W80, GL4 in both cases. I won't go into the debate on whether or not GL5 is or is not suitable for manual transmissions, but if you're using the incorrect oil, you can still get hard shifts and uh, issues over time. And at that point, I went on to compare the Febby oil with the Ravenol MTF3 that you see here in front of you with regards to specifications and price. And the first thing that stood out was actually the price. Febby was about 8 euros per liter, whereas the Ravenol is about 12 euros per liter, so 50% more expensive. And also on the Ravenol bottle, it says for synthetisches Getriebe oil meaning full synthetic gear oil. Full synthetic meaning that the base oil in the bottle is group 4, PAO. Whereas with the Febby, I have my doubts. I don't recall seeing the synthetic word on the bottle. Also regarding viscosities, the Febby oil is rated at about 114 centistokes at 40 degrees, whereas the Ravenol is rated at about 35 meaning three times as low. So this Ravenol MTF3 should flow much easier and hopefully will solve the hard shift issues. And with that said, let's get to work. 
And just a quick technical reminder, the gearbox on this little car, which you can see down there, is an F17, 5-speed manual. This particular unit is the wide ratio box, and it's from 2012. And what's a little annoying about this box is it's not fitted with a drain bolt at all. So it tends to be a bit of a hassle to take the oil out because you have to drop the differential pan, let the oil flow out and then put it back. But it actually gets tricky when you do the putting back of the differential cover because you need to change the gasket, you need to clean everything up, you need to make sure that you don't scratch the surfaces, so it's a bit tricky. And normally after you do the draining, there are three ways you can do the filling. Number one is through that breather that you see down there, the one with the black cap. Number two is through the hole for the uh, reverse sensor that you can see down there with the wire connected to it. And number three is through the oil level plug, which is located uh, behind the front left wheel. And I'm going to run a little experiment just as I did when uh, we changed the oil for this car, I'm going to check if it's actually possible to drain the oil from the box using that small 12 volt pump. Because theoretically, if it is, it means you can actually skip the removal of the differential cover and all the associated hassle with uh, relative ease. I'm not sure if it's gonna work or not. We're gonna try and see what happens. But in any case, I'll also be doing the differential cover bit just for the sake of the film. And before I can do any of that, I need to get below the car and remove the metal shield in order to gain more access. So I'll do that and be back in a few minutes. And with the shield removed, here is the differential cover that we'll tackle a bit later. And towards the back of the box, the top left corner, let's see if I can show it to you, that one over there, that is our level plug. So we will definitely need to open that to make sure we don't underfill or overfill the box. And I'm actually going to try to play with it without having to remove the front left wheel, because that would be good for safety purposes and also a little bit for convenience. And with that said, let me set up the pump and see if we can actually drain anything with it. Right, the pump is nearly set. Just as with the oil drain, we're going to dump the contents in our measuring jar because we're also interested to find out how much oil we can actually take out. As a side note, the F-17 takes about 1.6 liters of oil, give or take. And first, we're going to try through the breather, as I mentioned before, which has this black plastic cap, which you need to pull. It may take a bit of effort, but I recommend just using your fingers, no tools, because it is plastic and it can actually crack. After this comes out, you need a 17 millimeter hex to actually remove the breather bolt. And I'm going to use my ratchet and a small extension. See if I can slacken it off. Yeah, slacken it off. I think after I slacken it off, it uh, seems to come out quite easily. There we go. So, this is the breather. If you take this out, strongly recommend that you clean it because if this thing gets clogged and air that pressurizes inside the box for, from the temperature can't go out through it, it's going to go out through the drive shaft seals and you'll start getting leaks. So the thin tube is in, but it didn't really go in too much. So I'm pretty certain that I won't be able to drain to higher volume from this, but let's just try and see what happens. The 
it's definitely pulling something out, but it seems to be only a little bit. Yep, no luck. This is just a little bit of oil. So we can conclude. We definitely cannot pull the gearbox oil through the breather using a small pump. So next we are going to try through the oil level plug. And the level plug needs a 13 millimeter hex and a bit of gymnastics to access it. I'm actually curious to see what level of oil is already in the box. Yeah, and there's definitely some oil dripping. I am going to let it drip. And then I'm going to put the pump in there and see if I can get some more out. And as you can see, this time it actually is pulling some oil out, which is good. I'll be curious to see just how much. And after pumping for about 10 minutes, this is all that I got. I have to say I'm a little bit disappointed. Out of 1.6, 1.7 liters, I only got 300 milliliters. So pumping through the level plug also doesn't work. And we have one more plug to check. And that is the plug that also acts as the reverse sensor for which we need a 22 millimeter hex to open. Oh, and by the way, the level plug also has a magnet at the top, which collects uh, metal shavings over time. So let's take a look at this. This was cleaned obviously one year ago, and it just shows normal wear, nothing large, no big particles, which is very good. So we know there's no damage to the box. And it's best to clean this up before reinstalling, obviously. I'm talking about this one with the sensor, which you disconnect by hand easily. It has a plastic tap at the top, which you need to lift and pull to get out of the way. And here's the 22 mil that fits in. Here's the reverse sensor taken out and our last chance to see if the pump is of any use. I'll connect it and uh, drain as much as I can off camera and I'll skip uh, straight to the results. And sure enough, the answer is definitely nothing. Maybe just a few milliliters, but that's it. So at this point, we can conclude that you cannot use one of these pumps to simplify your life and drain the transmission oil from the five speed transmission on an Opel Corsa. So even though we may not like it, we have to do it the hard way which means removing the differential cover. For the differential cover, you need a 10 millimeter hex for the bolts. I would suggest you put that horizontal bar to one side so that you have room to work on and you use a container to collect the oil because there will be oil obviously coming from here. Now, one thing of note, if you remove all the bolts and then you pry the differential cover off, it's gonna make a lot of mess. So the way to go here is to just slacken the bolts, create some room so that oil starts spilling gently. And when the oil has spilled for the most part, then you can take the cover out and it will be much less messier. And here's what I mean. I've slackened the five bolts from the front and take a look at this one see oil's already starting to come out so what i'm gonna do now because i want this part to loosen up first so that oil is all the oil is going to drain from this side i'm going to remove these bolts this 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 and the two from over there in the hopes that i can actually create sufficient space for oil to flow faster and here's what I mean. After uh, struggling quite a lot, especially with the bolts that are behind that uh, lower engine mount, 
for which you will actually need a thin 11 millimeter wrench. Eventually, the cap slackens, it slackened on its own, and oil is starting to come out. At which point, just drain as much as you can, and then continue removing the bolts in order to access the differential. I let all the oil drain overnight, and afterwards I removed the differential cover, which as you can see is made of an alloy with aluminum, and this will become important when we put it back, it has to do with the tightening torques of the bolts, but we'll get to that later. And this is actually the total amount of oil that I managed to remove from the box, which is about 1. Point about 1.1 liters out of a total of 1.6, 1.7, give or take. And there's three mentions that I want to make right now. Number one, this absolutely stinks. I mean the oil. Now, the reason why gear oil stinks is because the wear protection additives are based on sulfur and phosphorus, which do their job very well, but their uh, smell is absolutely horrible. So be careful when you're playing around with this stuff. Number two, remember how I said at the beginning of the film that I thought the oil was clean? Well, actually, look at it now. It's not very clean. Not to say that it contains any metal or anything that would suggest that the gearbox has worn. The gearbox is fine, and I'll show it a bit later. But just take a look at how dirty the oil in the manual gearbox gets after just one year and 10,000 miles of usage. Okay, so if anyone says that Manual gearbox oil should never be changed. Well, they're wrong. Just look at its state after only one year. Okay, so number one was the differential. Number two is the quality of the oil. Number three is the volume. And the fact that we only got about 1.1 liters means that there's still about half a liter I expect in the box. Namely, under the uh, actual synchros, which are separate from the differential. And I'm going to try and see if I can remove that one as well. And finally, here we are underneath the car with access to the differential. And I'm just going to take a minute to look around a bit and see what's what. Diff looks good on both sides. And the interesting thing is, see up there, those are the gears from inside the box. And whatever oil is left is actually up there not sure if up there right namely inside this part of the box and believe me i tried but you can't remove it i spent a good half hour or more trying which means that you may not actually be able to remove all the oil from the box when you drop the differential pan and secondly if you're going to change oil types as i'm going to do now you're bound to mix a little bit of the old oil with the new one. Now, assuming that the oil types are all compatible with the box, which in my case there are, I would say that shouldn't really cause a problem. And now comes the most annoying thing of the entire operation and the main reason why I tried to actually pull the oil out with the pump and unfortunately failed is the removal of this paper gasket here see which tears off as you try to remove it and you have to remove it bit by bit and believe me this takes time and you're also supposed not to use anything too sharp because the box as i said is aluminum and if you use something that's too sharp or steel or something you're going to cause dents inside the aluminum that the new gasket may not be able to seal anymore and you might get leaks so this operation just needs patience and uh, working with care which is what i'm going to do now and i will come back when everything is done and here's how it looks like after about two hours of rather painstaking work all clean and flat and with no residue from the old gasket almost like new right and this is what i used for uh, cleaning 
this uh, scraper for horizontal surfaces see for flat surfaces i mean and for detailing i used a scalpel and then i finished it off with some very 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 fine sandpaper to make sure that everything is clean plus brake fluid at the end when using a scalpel or any kind of blade or razor to clean the aluminium surface make sure that you either go as horizontal as you can as parallel to the surface that you're cleaning as you can or perpendicular and scrub side to side okay do your best to not come in at an angle i mean don't come in like this okay at a steep angle because then as you're pushing you may actually dent the aluminium hello there he's uh, he's inspecting my work did i do a good job yeah he's not impressed oh well and this is why I had to do all the work. This is the original GM gasket as it came from the factory. And what you can notice is, is that it's just paper on one side, but on the other side, it is also glued. That's why it's so hard to take off. Now, on some Corsas, on some Opals, the glue is actually put on the differential case side, which makes it easier to clean because you have a lot of space but i was unlucky enough to have the glue placed on the actual differential side underneath the car and yeah i i did struggle a bit because of the limited space but anyways the job is done we can move on oh and by the way remember how i said you can't really remove the extra oil that's uh, underneath the cogs and the synchros well, I actually thought of a way where you can remove some of it, as you can see. And that way is, you make sure that the rear of the car is on the ground. You raise the front, but you make sure that the front left wheel, the one closest to the box, is raised to the highest possible level using a jack. And that means all the oil from that area is going to be pushed towards the hole that connects it to the differential and subsequently out of the box so we're gonna let this one drain for a few more minutes and i'm curious to see how much we actually got out and this is what i managed to get an additional 200 milliliters so not a very small amount but this is the absolute limit i've tried everything i could this is all i'm gonna get so Overall, I got about 1.1, 1.2 liters from the original drain, including also what I lost in the container and so on, plus an additional 200, that's about 1.4 liters out of about 1.6 or 1.7 liters. So nearly all of it, but not exactly all of it. And finally, time to reassemble everything. And we start with the cleaned up differential cover and on its contour we apply a thin layer of fresh oil on the entire surface in order to lubricate the gasket that's going to be on top and after dabbing the surface in oil we take our new gasket this also has a thin layer of oil on one surface and we simply put the gasket on top. Next, we need to apply a layer of oil on the other side of the gasket as well, like so. And then in order to make sure that the gasket doesn't move during installation, you can just take some small zip ties and uh, tighten them on the holes of two bolts, two will suffice. Don't tighten them too hard so as to force the gasket and don't leave them too slackened so as to allow the gasket to move too far. So we've put one here and another one here. And with this assembled, let's go to the car. 
and underneath the car you put the differential cover in place you add two bolts one to each side don't tighten them just screw them in a couple of turns to make sure it's secure at which point you can cut the two zip ties because now the differential cover and the gasket are in their proper positions and then you continue to add the other eight bolts making sure to apply some medium strength thread locker to each of them and when you're doing the tightening the bolts should be tightened uh, progressively make sure to torque all the bolts to 18 newton meters or 13 foot pounds this is because uh, the plate and the box are aluminum if the plate were steel uh, the steel one is black the tightening torque would be 30 newton meters three zero so just grab your torque wrench and torque each one of them like so and make sure you torque them in a crisscross pattern so this is number one number two number three number four number five number six number seven number eight you get the idea okay i'm all done here i want to clean this up a bit and then we can proceed next i need to reinstall the reversing switch remember i took this one out to see if i can get oil from this uh, hole and apply medium strength thread locker to it put it in place and tighten by hand until you can no longer do so and to tighten it you need 20 newton meters or 15 foot pounds and a 22 millimeter hex that should be a bit longer you see the black one up there that's it and then don't forget to reinstall the connector you simply push until it clicks ah there's the click okay we're done here and we are finally at the oil filling stage before you do this make sure that the oil level plug is removed and that the car is horizontal in order to get an accurate reading of when the box is properly filled and right now because we know the capacity of the f17 is around 1.6 liters we're going to add precisely 1.6 liters and check the level And I've added 1.6, a little bit over 1.6. You can see that the oil is draining from the level plug. So we are spot on. We're going to let that drip a little bit longer and then install the level plug. And the oil level plug should be installed with medium strength thread locker as well and tightened to 22 newton meters like so and a bit more cleanup this is the oil that spilled from the level plug and i want to clean this up as well and we're nearly ready to take the car out for a drive and the last thing is for us to install the breather at the top of the box before installing it make sure it's clean i used brake cleaner but if it's really dirty you can use a needle or something and what i mean by clean is if you spray brake cleaner inside it should come out through this small hole at the bottom and after all is done screw it in place by hand this one doesn't need 
medium strength thread locker. So just screw it in by hand first. Afterwards, tighten the breather to 30 newton meters or 22 pound feet, like so. And don't forget to install the black plastic cover, which you need to push until it clicks. I did the clicking of camera because I needed both hands to push it. It's uh, pretty tough plastic. Anyways, the reassembly is done, excluding the underbody shield, but I don't want to install that one right now. Right now, I want to start the car, make sure there are no leaks, and then take it out for an initial test drive. And let's see what happens when she starts. Okay, we don't have any weird sounds. The top of the box is fine. And underneath, for now, it appears to be fine. So next up, test drive. And here we are the next day. I drove the car for about 50 kilometers and then checked underneath and there are no discernible leaks or other problems with the gearbox or the differential cover. So everything seems to be well. I will let my lady drive the car for a few more days and then recheck to make sure everything is fine. And I will update you once that is done. About one week and uh, 300 kilometers later, I'm finally able to wrap things up and uh, reach the conclusions. Regarding the oil change, the car is indeed behaving much better, especially when starting cold. My lady said that she immediately noticed a difference and that was consistent every morning when she left for work, which does confirm my initial suspicions that the Febby oil was too thick and the Ravenol version, which is thinner and also full synthetic, is a much better choice also considering that it uh, matches the latest opal standard for the f17 gearbox namely uh, 1940004 speaking about the oil itself recall how i mentioned that the old febby oil and in general gear oil tends to smell pretty bad because of the sulfur and phosphorus additives for uh, wear protection well guess what the ravenol one doesn't smell bad at all which obviously means they used a different set of additives to offer the same level of protection and i'm also suspecting these new additives also ensure better suitability for the uh, brass synchronizers inside the manual gearbox and now let's talk about the operation itself which was a bit of a struggle especially the removal of the old gasket, uh, the removal of the differential bolts, especially those that were hidden by the uh, lower engine mount, which got me thinking, how could we do this operation much easier? And there is a solution. Even though you don't have a physical drain plug, you can use the level plug as a drain plug and do something like pour one liter of fresh oil and allow one liter of old oil mixing up with the fresh oil to drain put the plug back in drive the car for a while and then repeat the procedure another one or two times which is much much simpler and works especially well if you're using exactly the same oil so much faster much less hassle which is exactly what i'm actually going to do the next time i'm going to change the oil because i don't want to go through the uh, removal of the differential cover again and speaking about when to change the oil the manual doesn't say and if you ask the manufacturer they may say it's lifetime oil but don't believe that every oil in the car should be changed at some point and i think something like three years or 50 to 60 thousand kilometers is a very good number for the sake of preventative maintenance which works if you also consider the cost for these two liters of oil plus the gasket, which together summed up to about 30 euros. So the cost is pretty small. 
and I also asked a dedicated Opal service for a similar uh, cost and I got back a quote which was more close to about 70 to 75 euros so more than double so it pays to actually try and do this operation yourself and as always don't forget to recycle the used oil don't throw it on the ground down the drain etc take it to a used oil recycling center and with that said thank you very much for watching please consider subscribing if you enjoy my videos and i will catch you all next time have a lovely day and goodbye